You know, people wonder how I got here because it seems to be a man's world, but my father was the editor of Automotive News, an industry paper in Detroit, and he would bring home test cars every day, which made me incredibly popular on the playground. All the boys wanted to talk to me about the car that had no steering wheel that you drove with your thumbs or the brand new Avanti. So from there, I was an exchange student in Ecuador when I was 14 and learned how to drive in the Andes Mountains in this little Toyota Jeep-like vehicle where they measure driver error with small white crosses. So I learned very quickly how to drive well. When I got back um, in high school, I would date anyone who would let me drive his car. And I drove everywhere 100 miles an hour because it sounded like a nice round number. Um, from there, and of course my dad had a station wagon because we had a big family, but it had a big engine and that's where I learned how to sneak out, drive across the state to Ann Arbor where all the hippies were, 100 miles an hour there and back, which gave me my love of speed. So I, I couldn't concentrate in college, uh, so I dropped out and bought a car and turned it into a taxi cab. Yes, I did. I did that because I thought I was a great driver, uh, but I couldn't afford to work on or I couldn't afford to get it fixed all the time. So I had to teach myself how to work on it with like a big mechanics manual and it was very painful, but I slowly learned how to do everything on this car. That was a very dangerous job, driving a cab. So I quickly, after five years, propelled me into the Chrysler test track, which was just a few miles from where I lived on a farm. And there, um, the government made Chrysler hire women because they didn't have any women that weren't secretaries or in food service. So they made them hire women. I got in on that wave and we test drove cars 400 miles a day. And um, I think they threw away the reports. There was no room for advancement. The minute I figured that out, I transferred to be a mechanic. And the only place that would have me there was the impact lab where a mechanic doesn't fix things, they smash cars into walls. And I will tell you, that could be the best job I've ever had in my life. Smashing Imperial into the wall at 30 miles an hour, wonderful. I used big belt sanders, welders, socket wrenches, and um, from there, I got laid off. And that brings me immediately to what I do now. 30 years ago, car and driver thought I was hilarious and hired me, the editor of Car and Driver hired me to, to kind of mess with the guys there. And I became a journalist suddenly overnight. And 30 years later, I've been, I did five years at Car and Driver. I have, uh, I did, I had a long standing job as the editor of Automobile Magazine, which I was fortunate enough to start with the editor of Car and Driver. He asked me to go along as his first, um, uh, executive editor. So 30 years writing about cars. But the background was solid, probably more solid than any of the guys that worked there other than a couple of engineers.